Um, I, I thought about the, the question that, that we're all addressing today is uh, how to scale smart cities and, and sort of considered, well, how does that happen? How do we scale smart cities? Um, I suppose one of the, one of the key ways is um, authorities or similar bodies investing in, in infrastructure and new services. Um, and Bristol, uh, Bristol's very fortunate. We've got incredibly good uh, connectivity infrastructure in, in the Bristol is open uh, architecture in Bristol. But not every city has that advantage. Um, so perhaps the, the, the next way that smart city scale is that they, um, they grow as people start to use the services and, and, and uh, share the benefits amongst their, their network and groups and more people start to use it. Um, and the, th the third way I think that, that smart cities will scale in the future is as people uh, use the infrastructure of smart cities themselves to create their own services and to share their own data, their own personal sensors into that, uh, into that data pool. Um, so really it's the sort of second and third of those I'm going to try and uh, cover briefly uh, today, just how we involve citizens and communities in our smart cities in order to scale them. Um, oh. Technology is baffling me. Right, here we go. So where do I start from? I, I, I'm starting from this sort of portentous statement, know thyself. It's... Um, I think it's really important to recognise that one size won't fit all for smart cities. London's very different from Bristol's, very different from Manchester's, very different from Leeds, very different from Birmingham. So those attributes that go to make your city, I think we need to be uh, very familiar with those things in order to be able to uh, move forward with a, um, a successful smart city vision. Uh, just put some, uh, in this patchwork, put some things about Bristol. Uh, in terms of our infrastructure, we, we do have world-class uh, infrastructure which has been very heavily invested in in, in, in Bristol. We've got uh, the Socrata open data platform and we also partner with uh, Transport API uh, to hold their data set. Uh, we've got a great history of in, in innovation, uh, being the home to Brunel and uh, uh, Clifton Suspension Bridge, SS Great Britain, Concord, very creative place uh, Bristol. Uh, the, we, obviously the trip hop scene, but also the Wurzels and uh, uh, Wallace and Gromit and Banksy uh, and the chap with the red trousers uh, just under the massive attack uh, LP cover is George Ferguson. He's our mayor and I think it's, it, it, he's a critical component of our smart city. He holds a single vision for Bristol's uh, progress toward being a smart city. I think that's been extremely important. Uh, as well as our progress in the, being a smart city, also to helping us to gain the European Green Capital Award 2015. Uh, so, so why? Why would we bother to involve citizens? It's much easier to, uh, to run projects without citizens involved. I, I, I know that. I've been running tech projects for a long time. And as soon as you involve citizens, they get complex and hard. So wh why would we want to do that? Um, I think the first thing to acknowledge is that Smart city projects are not technology projects, really. They're t projects about how you make your city more efficient or more livable or a better place to be. So the technology is a component of it, but really the out outcomes are about people's lives. So you need people to have some input to that. Um, and citizens really understand the problem space, the things that we're trying to address fundamentally well. They live in, in those communities. They live with the uh, transport in Bristol, for instance. Or, or the air quality in parts of Bristol every single day. And they can help to inform us so that we get a very granular view of what those problems are. Um, and really critically, I think, is, is that you, you genuinely need support and buy-in from your communities in order for these things to work. Uh, my experience of working in Bristol is that uh, the people of Bristol can be very vocal. They can be... Um, they can... Uh, be disruptive, they can be resistant to things that they don't want to happen. Um, practical examples are our mayor decided that he wanted to expand the residential parking zones and uh, the, the activists of Bristol decided that they were going to bring a tank and park it in front of the uh, council house to make sure that he got the message that they didn't want that. So I, I had to think about what, what is it that makes smart cities successful in this context? Um, well, first of all, 
they do need to be useful. They've got to respond to a genuine user need. They've got to address something that people uh, have some pain with and make it better. Um, usable is, is critical. This, this, uh, and I think we can take uh, some great uh, leadership from Apple and, and, and others who, who put usability at the, the top of their technology tree to, uh, to be able to interact with the city seamlessly and without um, additional complexity is going to be really important, I think, for getting uptake of, of new services. Uh, accessible cities are going to be extremely important too, both from the perspective of people who have uh, disabilities, but also making the infrastructure, making the architecture, making the data accessible to people and to communities so they can interact with it and they can use it for their own purposes. And uh, this, this last element of it being acceptable, um, th these, these, are, these are feelings that people might have about being, uh, seeing their city transformed. It needs to be in, uh, secure, safe, enabling, benign, trustworthy. Um, people don't always trust city councils, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. So I think those, those are critical elements that we have to address in order to get people to uptake smart city services at scale. Uh, and finally, the tech definitely has to work. Um, with a lot of these uh, projects, if, if you deploy technology and it's faulty or it's uh, flawed in some way, you've lost those participants for good. And uh, I, I know that through my own experience of, uh, of tech projects in the past. So um, in involving citizens, what are our challenges? Uh, well, in Bristol, we've got 440,000 people. and I don't have the time to talk to every single one of them. So we have to find a way to do that, to, to segment our societies, to talk to representatives. Um, the concepts around smart city, they're probably OK for most of us in this room, because we, we deal with this often. But the idea of internet of things and ubiquitous connectivity and sensors to, to, to people who, who don't do this for a living are quite difficult to get across. And you have to find a way to use language that um, informs uh, in, a, in a gentle way. Um, and also this, this access to hard to reach citizens. I hate to use the term hard to reach, they're not hard to reach, it's just that they don't want to talk to us. But we need to find a new way to, to do that. Um, and I think the reason that there is this hard to reach group is, is because people have existing relationships with authorities and authorities present themselves in particular ways. Um, and people's relationships and previous experiences have not always been great. Sometimes, you know, as a city council, we might have taken somebody's children away, or e even if it's something very trivial, like we, we didn't collect their bin, people have a certain view of city councils, and often they don't necessarily want to interact with us in something as trivial as a smart city project. So the way that in Bristol we've, we've got around that resistance in the past is to use these third parties, trusted third party intermediaries who've got that local credibility um, I have to say, in, in Bristol's communities, I, I have very little credibility. I don't even have a Bristol accent. I'm from Newcastle. And if I, if I sort of wander in in my, in my suit and my council badge and my Geordie accent, <laughs> I'm not going to get very far. But there are those who can work on our behalf and will make a lot more progress. Um, so how do we go about engaging people productively in the development of our smart cities? Um, well, we, we have a couple of principles, and the first comes from our mayor, from George Ferguson. This is, this is an idea of using the city as a test bed. He's very publicly stated that. He wants Bristol to be viewed as a place where people can come and experiment with, uh, with new technologies um, to, to try and improve the way that city works. And also we have the idea of a living lab. We have a designated area within Bristol where we work one-to-one -one with residents uh, deploying technologies and iteratively developing those technologies based on uh, the feedback from those, uh, from those citizens, those participants, in order to co-produce a solution that's uh, usable, ac accessible, acceptable, all of those, all of those elements. Um, the local partners who we work with in order to, to do the engagement work, we have them do long-term regular support and intervention. It's not just about getting people to be involved in your project and then them disappearing. People face, often we want to talk to people over a period of a year about things which are happening with the technology within their homes. So we need that long-term intervention. So we need to plan for a long-term support by our, uh, by our engagement partners. 
And uh, just from our experience, we've used the living lab approach for about seven years, and, and it's generally gone very well. There's a few experiences that I've had have been quite painful, but generally it's gone very well. Um, and our, our plans at the moment is to extend that living lab network geographically, so move into different areas of, of Bristol. Um, but also, we, 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 our living lab works around a project basis. So we have a project, we have a certain technology we want to develop, and we work with the living lab on that. But I wanted to set up a digital citizens panel where we can perhaps float new ideas that are not project based, perhaps not very formed, and just get some feedback there from a panel of people who are representative of, of, uh, of, of our um, dem uh, demographics. And the last element there is, is, is a new thing which I'm taking to our um, uh, senior leadership team in Bristol City Council. I, um, as we're moving into these new areas and we've got new sorts of data available and the opportunity to combine data with other organisations, I'm proposing that we should have some sort of citywide ethics, security and privacy board where we have experts but also we have citizens, we have representatives from different authorities who are able to just discuss whether is it okay to um, tag somebody with dementia because I say it's for their own good or are there broader questions we need to ask about that. Uh, so here are my conclusions. Um, there's this, this idea, I, I showed that montage at the start to demonstrate that, you know, Bristol's, it is a unique city, it's, it's dynamic, it's characterful, it's patchwork and lots of different things happening, lots of different ideas and neighbourhoods and communities all working collaboratively, um, which makes it, it doesn't make a neat and tidy pattern, so that there probably is an opportunity to sort of helicopter in a, a, a smart city and drop it on the top of, of, of any area because it, it, it's not going to work probably, it's not going to be uh, accepted in the same way. Um, I, th I think one of the critical things we need to, to look at is making sure, and, that, and that's what such a great job the ODI is doing, ensuring that the infrastructure, the systems, the data are all flexible enough uh, to deliver the things that we want to deliver as a city council but also to uh, create the opportunity for citizens and for communities to build their own services, to add their own data. Um, and it, it creates this thing, this kind of idea of an open programmable city. Um, and finally, um, if we don't do that, then there is the danger that we will end up knowing the location of everything but the value of nothing. So thank you very much.